Welcome back to Jimmy V Week on ESPN as we continue our commitment to the V Foundation for Cancer Research in tribute to Jim Valvano and his dream to defeat cancer. The Jimmy V Classic, game number two, USC against the second ranked team in the nation, Memphis. From here at Madison Square Garden, the gentlemen who call the game, Dan Schulman and Dick Vitale. John, thank you very much and really looking forward to this one. There's so much talent, so much athleticism on display in this game. Well, you got two former NBA coaches as well, and you got some elite talent, as you said. Everybody is talking about certainly Mayo and Rose. Don't forget about a youngster named Chris Douglas Roberts. CDR, he has a way of letting the other team get a little CPR. Yeah. Nice to talk about a non-freshman every now and again. He is the leading scorer, better than 21 a game for Memphis. Let's bring you the starting lineups now, beginning with USC and we will start in the front court Taj Gibson he's a Brooklyn guy he's coming back home and looking to have a big night tonight for the Trojans up front along with freshman Davon Jefferson who's been on fire recently Daniel Hackett suffered a broken jaw in preseason practice all he did was record a triple double in his second game back for Memphis, a team playing for the second time this season here in New York. Joey Dorsey, a rebounding machine, and a very athletic and lanky Robert Dozier in the front court. In the back court, Chris Douglas Roberts, Antonio Anderson, he's the blue guy on this team, and Derrick Rose, one of the freshmen that everybody has been talking about for several weeks. And for Derrick Rose, there have been some spectacular moments this year, and also he's been turnover prone at times, and you could say the same thing for O.J. Mayo of Southern Cal. They're talented, and yes, they're fresh. For more on Mayo, let's go to Doris Burke. Dan, Tim Floyd says this is the most physically and mentally prepared freshman he has ever been around. Now, Derek Rose, his counterpart and friend from Memphis, says his physical skills are exceeded only by his competitive drive to win. The Memphis strategy tonight defensively, guys, is this. Make him see hands. They want to get up into him and pressure him. They want him hands contested on the jump shot. Why, Dick? Because this is the kind of guy who can string five, six jump shots in a row and put an opponent out of reach. Well, you know, Doris, he's a very streaky shooter. Shooter. He's matured as a person as you look here at the freshman standouts, the numbers as you look at them. Numbers when you look at Derrick Rose, he's more or less about a guy that's going to create pressure on the defense with his ultra quickness. Mayo has to score. The big thing with Mayo is shot selection, but I will tell you this. He had a little problem in high school, but had a little situation. A lot of people thought maybe a little attitude problem. He has really matured. He has grown up. He's as friendly with the media and with people. I couldn't believe how friendly he was with me before the game. And Tim Floyd didn't even have to recruit O.J. Mayo. O.J. Mayo came to him, a guy who was representing Mayo, a mentor of his name, Rodney Guillory, walked into Tim Floyd's office and said, O.J. Mayo wants to come to Southern Cal. And Tim Floyd said, well, I think I'll take him. He liked the big market. He liked the fact Floyd had coached in the NBA. And Mayo says he liked the possibility of taking a program to the two heights that hadn't been in several years. Hey, take a look at John Calipari. I'll tell you one thing about Mayo. He's used to playing in big crowds. In fact, Sonny Vergara had his big, big tournament out in Vegas. He's playing against Odin. And there were over 6,000 gathered to watch a game. I mean, that's what he's about. I mean, the kid has got great talent. Antonio Anderson with a wild shot. Dozier with a rebound, and Memphis takes the early lead. Well, remember, this is Memphis against Southern Cal. It is now Rose against Mayo, because if either guy decides they want to put a one-on-one -on -one show, they will absolutely hurt their team. Robert Dozier, who missed the last couple of games with a foot injury, as the first basket of the game. USC 6-2 unranked. Memphis 6-0, ranked second behind only North Carolina. Bob Memphis really known for their tough defense. They're very aggressive defensively. This is a club two years in a row went to the Elite Eight. Forced the turnover. A travel called on Dwight Lewis. Memphis with tremendous athleticism. And when they really get after it at the defensive end, they are alone. They got great wing players when you talk Anderson and Douglas Roberts. They're going to be a little triangle and two right here. A little triangle and two. They're playing man-to-man -man right now on Rose and on Douglas Roberts. Anderson misses the three. 
And another travel. Davon Jefferson just going a little bit too quickly for the Trojans. He's a great athlete. He's a guy that hasn't played for two years. Tim Floyd said, here's a kid. Didn't play early this year. Had a little bit of a situation. Got to get familiar with the system. But two years worked on his academics yep. to be able to get eligible. A 21-year-old freshman. Mayo is a 20-year-old freshman. Dorsey, nice pass. Anderson missed it. And then is fouled. Anderson wide open. They're utilizing a little gimmick defense now. Triangle and two. You should be able to get some open shots. Other people are trying to take Rose and Douglas Roberts out of the game. And we expect to see a variety of different defenses from USC tonight to try to contain a Memphis, a Memphis team averaging better than 85 points per game. Well, I'll give Tim, Tim Floyd a lot of credit. What a five-game stretch. Miami of Ohio, an outstanding team there from the Mid-American, Southern Illinois, Oklahoma, Kansas on Sunday, and now Memphis. I mean, remember this. They played Sunday, had to fly from L.A. to here and get ready to play here Tuesday night. And they won three of those previous four, lost to Kansas Sunday, lost their season opener to Mercer at home by 15, but no Jefferson and no Daniel Hatch. Hackett. So two key players were not healthy. Let me tell you this, Hackett's father was special. Rudy was an outstanding player at Syracuse. Played under an outstanding coach before Mr. Behang came along, Roy Danford. Gibson working hard on the interior, doesn't get the bounce, follows the miss, but it's Memphis basketball. And one of the keys for USC, says Tim Floyd, get back. Get back. They do not want to get beaten in transition tonight. Well, because Rose puts such pressure. So you're going to get wide open shots on that baseline with that 2-3, but you got to make those shots. The pull up from 15 feet away for O.J. Mayo. O.J. Mayo can score in a variety of ways. A little streaky shooting from deep. Not a good shot from Rose, and we saw a couple of those the last time we saw him here in New York. See, he's going to be careful, and he doesn't try to play a matchup game. Mayo at the other end, Dick. I think Mayo likes the big stage. I think he likes the big spotlight. Madison Square Garden. Take a look right here. There's the little jumper, an immediate range jump shot. Pulled up. I'm going to watch him in transition. Take the ball to the goal. Protect the ball. O.J. Mayo out of Huntington, West Virginia. A long way from home, and he has been in double figures in every single game in which the Trojans have played. Played high school with Patrick Patterson, who I fell in love with, who I saw play for Kentucky against North Carolina. I think Patterson's going to have a brilliant career. Kentucky. A little tough break today, lost Alex Alija, transfer. Mayo is on Derrick Rose right now. An early entry into this game for Donnell Mack, the lefty sharpshooter, as Anderson has gone to the bench, but Mack misses the three. Now they lose Gibson. Gibson's a key player against Kansas. He got in foul trouble, only played 17 minutes. They got to have Gibson contribute. He had some great games last year. I'll tell you one thing, Southern Cal and UCLA, there's going to be one special matchup in basketball. Taj Gibson from out of Brooklyn right here in New York City, excited to be back home and snuck behind the defense. Nobody got back from Memphis. And that's the reverse layup and utilized is the basket to seal off the defense. And he's so valuable to this club, blocking shots. His last two games, he has fouled out, and that's a major dilemma, and that concerns certainly Coach Floyd. Uh, just a sophomore, a preseason Wooden and Naismith Award candidate, averaged better than 12 points and eight rebounds per game. So it's not just Mayo, and it's not just Rose, as you said. We're going to talk about everybody. There's a lot of, a lot of talented players on both teams who deserve recognition. You know, Hackett, his dad played over at Mount Vernon. When he played on Mount Vernon, they had people like Gus Williams who went on to star, for example, at Southern Cal. As a look at Rudy, Rudy became good friends, played on the high school team with a fair actor. Not bad. Ooh. My favorite. Denzel, My, Denzel right. Washington, <laughs> who played a little at Fordham. In fact, he's named his daughter after Rudy's wife, Kathy. It's unbelievable. USC with an early five-point lead. Chris Douglas Roberts, he loves that little one-handed push shot, that semi-floater. He has used that so effectively. He was so brilliant on his court against Connecticut. John Calipari, nothing tricky. They'll play tough, hard-nosed, man-to-man, give help, play as a unit. 
Chris Douglas Roberts defending Mayo. And the jumper goes down for Dwight Lewis. Hey, Lewis can make shots. He's got a little bit of struggle. They got to get point production out of him. Dozier all alone. One of the guys they're going to lay off to try to put more pressure on the likes of Rose and Douglas Roberts. Well, they're playing that triangle in two, using two guys, play your head man to man, and the other three play a zone. 9-4 USC, three and a half minutes in, and Daniel Hackett, who lost 25 pounds after suffering that broken jaw at the end of September, has only gained about five of the pounds back, but is still playing some great basketball for the Trojans. Well, as you said, in the second game against South Carolina against Dave Odom, he had like 22 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 assists. Not bad, huh? Gibson stuffed, switches hands, and Dozier with a rebound. Memphis looking to push as always. They want to beat that zone down. Mack for three. That's the way you'll beat him with open wing jumpers, and that's why Mack's on the floor to give him that scoring. Nice shooting got that from Jeremy Hunt. That's right. They have all the starters back. Hunt was their first guy off the bench, but this is a deep, talented Memphis team. We're going to see a player named Sean Taggart, a transfer out of Iowa State, who's really helped them this year as well. Dorsey with a rebound. When he gets 10 or more in his career, they are 37 and a three now let me tell you this my friends how deep are they i firmly believe their second team could win conference usa usc up on memphis by two join espn and the v foundation in the fight against cancer call 1-800 for jimmy v Dick, this ESPN telecast is available in astounding high definition on ESPN HD, presented by Olivia. Well, just about everybody had a happy Thanksgiving, we hope, but not the Tigers. How come, Doris? Well, remember, this is a back-to-back -back Elite Eight team, the addition of Derrick Rose. Clearly, John Calipari concerned about managing the egos on this team, and I think... Guarding against complacency, guys, he canceled a two-day break, said we had a lot of individual meetings, a lot of talk about roles and defining things more clearly. He said we want to be elite players, and that takes work. So a little bit of an upset for the players, guys. And there were some grumpy Tigers, and many of them had booked flights uh, to sneak home for just about 48 hours. But John Calipari said, come on back, boys. you got to practice a little well, bit. Well, you know, that's John Calipari. Great work ethic. None of the players are going to outwork John Calipari. He's going to bust his gut, and that's why they've become really special now in Memphis. They really are the talk of the town. Sean Taggart, the transfer from Iowa State, is into the game, along with Dozier. Taggart has been very important for them the last couple of games. A long, athletic guy who is starting to work as hard as John Calipari has been asking him to work, or demanding he work, early this season. A held ball, and it'll stay at this end of the floor. They're so versatile. Can you imagine if Southern Calvo had Nick Young and Gabe Pruitt, two guys who left early for the NBA, Young went in the first round to Washington, the Wizards, Pruitt was picked in the second round by the Celtics. I mean, it's unbelievable if they had those kids joining this roster. Pruitt in the D-League right now, and a Young in the NBA with a Washington, a two-point lead for USC. The Trojans picked sixth in the Pac-10. What does that say about the strength of the conference? Uh, I'll tell you one thing, there's no way they're a sixth place team. I can tell you this, there's going to be some good news down to Stanford when they get Brooke Lopez to be eligible in the second semester. That's going to change the entire complexion for Stanford. And nobody talks about California. They're undefeated right now with Devon Harden, an outstanding club. Dwight Lewis with his second field goal, USC by four. Anderson is checked back in. Mack shooting early and often here tonight, but way long on that. That wing is wide open because of the triangle and two. And you play Rose, you play Douglas Roberts, you play a zone with the other three. What you're doing is you're saying, we're letting the other people beat us. Mack out, Willie Kemp in. Kemp, a sophomore, who is shooting 49% from beyond the arc this season. They have so many weapons. Mayo defended by Anderson. And Anderson, with the size and ability to stay with Mayo. They give a, give a lot of help defensively. They really play defense as a team. It's a unit. They slide together. And when you start doing that as a team, you got a chance to win. So many teams play individual defense, but don't give help to one another. Pull up a little bit strong for Jefferson, and the ball into the hands of the Tigers. Here comes Anderson. Rose, nice look. 
Actually, a travel there by Rose, moving a little bit quickly, now settles it down. Well, they've done a great job neutralizing the great ability of Rose. Uh, ah, that'll get you on the bench. That's that'll right. get you on the exactly bench. Right. I guarantee yeah. you he's coming out. I guarantee you he will be an assistant coach. He will sit next to the coach. A little shot. If you're going to make that play, you better deliver you better deliver. If you want to be the magic man and you want to be a delivery, I mean, you got to deliver. And right away. So you get him yeah. I'll tell you one thing. If Rose threw that pass, he's not coming out. <laughs> You're not suggesting a double standard, are you? Absolutely. <laughs> Superstars always get the break. Joey Dorsey will be coming in for Robert Dozier. Meanwhile, USC doing a job of the glass and leading by four here yeah. early. Tim Floyd also wants patience on offense. If the transition game's not there, he wants some touches and he wants execution. He wants Taj Gibson down low, but a block by Taggart. It will stay with USC 14 to shoot. And here comes Dorsey, and there goes Dozier. Well, they've done a great job so far neutralizing Rose. Not only that he hasn't scored, he hasn't been able to get them in transition to get the layup. John Calipari hollered at his team at shoot-around today. They want it in the 50s. We want it in the 90s. He's convinced that USC wants to play a much slower brand of basketball than the Tigers, and just about everybody plays a slower brand of ball than the Tigers. Mayo with you, deep range. Is that big time? Is that big time? I mean, he shot down from New Jersey, from Fort Lee, New Jersey, across the bridge. Eight of their 14. Taggart. Right back at you. Tell you, wide open. They're going to get open looks for their other players. Complimentary players are going to have to step up. They're going to have to be vital tonight because Southern Cal is making a commitment to shut the stars down. Southern Cal just getting healthy. They have played with an assortment of injuries this season. It will stay with the Trojans, 22 to shoot. Mayo has been one of the constants, the constant for USC. Here he is communicating, catching the ball, shooting from the NBA three. I'll tell you this though, Todd Gibson is the king. He's like my stocks man, a Dow Jones. -er. He's been up and down. He's had games where he's like 8 for 10, scores 20 against San Diego, and then he goes 1 for 5 against Miami of Ohio. Can't have those subpar games, especially against a team like Kansas. Well, he's there easily, their most legitimate inside presence. They've got a lot of perimeter guys, but he's their guy down low. And Jefferson's going to be special. He really is. He's just getting familiar with the college game, having been out for two years. That was him with the ball, number 5 there briefly, averaging 20 points per game in the last three. Joey Dorsey gets called for the foul for Memphis. Tomorrow night, the inaugural Pizza Hut Big East SEC Invitational tips off with a doubleheader. Number four, Georgetown taking on Alabama here on ESPN. And then West Virginia and Auburn on ESPN to both games. Coming from Birmingham, that is the second foul on Dorsey. You talked about Gibson staying out of foul trouble. That has been a problem periodically for Dorsey in his career. Dwight Lewis has his third field goal of the night. I'll tell you one thing, special situations, very important. Inbounds play, they convert off it. Taj Gibson with a pretty impressive block on Chris Douglas Roberts. I'll tell you one thing, I'm impressed with the way they execute. Watching Southern Cal here early in this game. Now a hold on Mayo. See, not only has Mayo been effective offensively, people don't realize with his strength, he's doing a superb job defensively, containing, staying in front of Rose, not allowing Rose to be able to beat him. They've played against each other, AAU games, yep. Yep. competition, they're familiar with one another. That's a point you've made. These freshmen get to college, and they're, no, they're, so, they're so different than freshmen of a generation Absolutely. ago. Absolutely. There's no intimidation. There's no awe. See, they're shadowing right now. Look at the way they're shadowing when you watch Chris Douglas Roberts. See, they're playing him head to head. Kemp off to Dozier, who gets held, and he'll go to the line. And by the way, the foul on Dorsey was just his first. So Dorsey went out, but he's only got one foul, so that's good news for Memphis. You know, it's the ultimate respect the team can get when teams utilize a gimmick defense against them. As you look at Dorsey, you know, when they play a gimmick defense against you, that is respect. I read the flag with a little respect, baby. <laughs> Want me to break into that? Uh, maybe later. R.E. Now we'll do it. <laughs> Around and out for Dozier. Memphis, how about this day? How crazy would this drive you as a coach if your team shot 59% from the free throw. Absolutely, especially when you're talking about an elite team. That could really break you down tournament time. But we said that about them last year, and then all of a sudden the tournament, they shot well. And they went to the Elite Eight two years in a row. 0 for 4 tonight. Beat by Ohio State, 
Mr. Odin had a message for Mr. Dorsey in that game. Mr. Dorsey now a senior and when he can stay on the floor when he stays out of foul trouble he is a tremendously important player. See this is what Tim Floyd wants some patience on offense. Patience poise leads to points. Not here. Here come the Tigers. CDR. Scoop. Dozier. And it goes. Good effort right there by Dozier on the offensive glass. I like the versatility and the flexibility that John Calipari has with this Memphis team. He's got talent. He can invert. He can utilize in many different ways. And he says with Dozier, Taggart, and Dorsey, he's got three guys for the two big spots. He always knows he's going to have two terrific players out on the floor. And I'll tell you one thing, John Calipari's getting a little last laugh. A lot of people thought it was the, the decline of Memphis basketball with all the Giants left Conference USA. But he's got the last laugh because he's going to post 25 wins like every year. Gibson with a travel. USC turns it over. Memphis is down by four with 11.08 to go in the first half. O.J. Mayo has been dealing with the spotlight seemingly forever. More on that when we come back. You can look shot like you ain't no USC leading Memphis 16 to 12 here in the Madison Square Garden. A lot of talk, of course, about O.J. Mayo. Grew up in the spotlight, was receiving national exposure by the time he was an eighth grader. Mayo talks about having to deal with all that pressure and attention at such an early age. I think it's at, it's at a time in my life where I was like, I'm starting to not like basketball. It's, you know, it's getting too business-like, and I'm not even making any money. You know, I'm just doing this, doing that, doing this, doing that. And so it almost wasn't uh, fun to me anymore. Next Tuesday, a chance to see O.J. Mayo up close and personal on ESPN's E60 at 7 p.m. Eastern. You know, the defense is really taken away. Douglas Roberts and Rose, they've had a combined two points thus in the first nine minutes of this game. So Tim Floyd's gamble so far is really working. It's a gamble. Anytime you're playing a gimmick defense, you are gambling. You're hoping that maybe you take them out of their rhythm. Let's see what they're doing right now. Now it looks like they're playing all well, box and one. O.J. Mayo is asking Tim Floyd what they should oh, be in. Yeah, yeah, there is some confused. confusion right now for the Trojans. And it winds up in a wide open shot for three for Willie Kemp. They were very confused out there. And one of the reasons is because Rose is not on the floor. And I think they got a little confused as to what set they would be in defensively. Angelo Johnson, number one in the game for USC. Tough shot off the glass. And it will be USC basketball. Casey Cunningham is into the game, a redshirt freshman out of Albuquerque. And Derek Rose is on the bench. O.J. Mayo, by the way, played all 40 minutes Sunday against Kansas. And again, they got in here in the middle of the night early yesterday morning, so they have not had a whole lot of time to prepare for Memphis. And you wonder if there's any jet lag or fatigue for the Trust USC. Trust me, he's only going to probably be there for one year, so I want to make sure to get maximum. <laughs> he's playing every minute. There's no rest for him. Johnson defended by Andre Allen. And the rebound brought down by Dorsey, who again only has the one foul. One of the fouls that was on Antonio Anderson, the Memphis bench thought, was on Dorsey. Dozier, no. Dorsey, yet another rebound. Kim. Dozier, the offensive rebound. See, they really get on the glass with their guys. The D&D &D guys, D squared, baby. Dozier and Dorsey. Andre Allen now with the point, of giving Derrick Rose a breather. Chris Douglas Roberts. Wide open shot from 15 for Dozier. I mean, Dozier wide open in that sequence right there. Here comes the full court pressure. A 7-0 run now for Memphis to take the lead. They're so tough. They really have that mental toughness defensively. Douglas Roberts stick right now on Mayo. He's going to see a lot of different defenders tonight. I don't think it matters. When his game is on, he doesn't care who's going. He's got that ability, that confidence. There's the jumper, a little strong, offensive rebound. The only area he's got to really work on, as it's been displayed early this year, is shot selection. Hackett out of control, got the loose ball back and lays it in. Hackett really plus have an impact in that lineup. Good job defensively getting back in transition, a must against Memphis. And a foul, that's a play. It looks like something they're just whipping up out of nowhere, but it's a lob play for a dunk, and they work on so many different variations of that in every single practice. They were playing man-to-man -man in that sequence right there. Take a look right here. Trying to beat him to the spot. Trying to steal the freeze. You know, light up. 
Yeah. See OJ staying here. He's not seeing ball you man. You gotta see both. He's not seeing ball you man. The ball is the most dangerous thing on the floor. He was so concentrated on the perimeter, had no vision of the man. Dorsey. More of a defender and a rebounder than he is a scorer as Taggart draws the foul. Game two here with the Jimmy V Classic in New York City. In our first game tonight, Notre Dame defeated Kansas State 68-59. to This is the second game, number two, Memphis taking on USC from MSG along with Dick Vitale, Doris Burke, and uh, our college game night crew as well, John Saunders, Jay Billis, Digger Phelps are all here. I'll tell you one thing, the recruiting class is getting better and better as well. When you think about what they're doing, DeMar DeRozan coming in, and again, Mr. Romeo Miller, that's right. You've heard of him, my man. A little rapper, superstar. Little Romeo. Yes, sir. He's going to be playing, baby. Seven count. He will get his autograph for the picture. Dwight Lewis just about yeah. wound up in uh, Jim O'Connell's lap, just a few seats down from us. He went to Beverly. He goes to Beverly Hills High School. I wonder if they store his kids there. Beverly Hills? I love Beverly Hills, man. Well, they are trying. Go down here. That's where you got to go with all the cash you're oh, making yeah. now. You're going to go to Rodeo. <laughs> we'll be out of UCLA. we got a game in Los Angeles, a uh, Saturday prime game in February against Arizona. We're going to go to Nate and Al's Deli. I'll tell you that. We'll see Larry King there. Taggart again. Taggart what a big open. performer he's becoming for the Tigers. Yeah, it's nice when you go to your bench and get guys like Taggart and Kemp and yeah. Allen. That's what I'm talking about. I'm not downgrading Conference USA. I think they've done a good job with good coaches. I just think that much of the quality of personnel that Calipari has. I think his second five legitimately can win the conference. Mayo, great use of the bounce pass. And it will go in and a foul for Dwight Lewis. Mayo started it with a steal and then a sweet dish. Yeah, terrific job by Mayo with the steal. Anticipates really well and then kicks the ball out. We will step aside. It's a 2020 game. Lewis from Mayo all tied up here at the Garden. The Jimmy V Classic here at Madison Square Garden. A good one between USC and number two Memphis all tied up at 20. Memphis a 33 win team each of the last two years and a lead eight team each of the last two years and easily the classic conference USA. Well, let me just say this. When Mike Train DC, the outstanding commissioner of the Big East, made the call and got Cincinnati, Louisville, Marquette to say bye-bye and come into the Big East, a lot of people thought it was with the decline of John Calipari and Memphis because they figured, hey, competition. John Calipari's getting the last lap. Those teams all beat each other up get to mediocrity. Syracuse gets left out of the NCAA tournament. Notre Dame gets left out. John Calipari, are you ready for this? At his worst, he has seven legitimate games where you talk about Oklahoma, Connecticut, Southern Cal, Georgetown, Arizona, Gonzaga, Tennessee. If you lose three of those, lose three of those in his league, I will give the league a benefit of the doubt. Let's say they upset them once or twice. He's still at worst. It's going to be like 30 and 4. Yeah. I mean, are you kidding I, I me? Look at it the, one numbers, or two seed, the numbers he's going to yeah. post over the next years. So he's getting the last laugh. He's got a great program. They're going to continue to win. They're going to do well in the NCAA tournament every year. So the guy doesn't have the pressure of pounding each other like these other teams do to mediocrity. Well, there's a precedent for this. I mean, you in the mid-90s when Coach Cal was there, dominated their league. Well, Temple was pretty good. Temple was very good. That's true. And, and look at Gonzaga, which gets a they get a challenge every now and again out of their conference, but they are the dominant team. And, and they go out and play some legit people. They do as well. And, and, and Mark Few and John Calipari have proven if you play a great non-conference schedule, you'll get television exactly. exposure, you'll get recruits, and you'll win consistently. You'll get visibility, yeah. and you become the king, and that's what he's done. And plus his bank account goes yeah. cha-ching, ching, ching. <laughs> he goes up and up because they get a little worried about him leaving Memphis. Well, had the flirtation with North Carolina State. Some people worried he might go back to the NBA, where he already was earlier with the New Jersey Nets. But, boy, does he seem happy He's right now in Memphis. He's a college coach, and so is Tim Floyd. They are perfect for the college game. They're teachers. They really love being in the gym. Andre Allen reaches in and commits the foul. A number of college coaches, Dick, who started off in college, went to the pros, and then have come back. Yeah, well, you take a look right here. In many cases, people say, well, they didn't succeed. What are the reasons they didn't succeed? Very simple. 
they never had really good jobs. They never had the great, great jobs like a lot of people have. And that really creates, in many cases, a downfall. Well, well let's go into the Wayback Machine. You coached in college. You coached in the NBA. What's the biggest difference for a coach? Well, I think the biggest difference is getting acclimated to the lifestyle of the NBA. I made a major mistake. My guy, my star, Bob Lanier, and I love Bob dearly. He used to come in all the time. He said, Dick, we're not in college. We can't practice two and a half, three hours a day. And I didn't buy it. I didn't listen to it. And I got fired and went to TV. And I'm undefeated. <laughs> I haven't lost the game in 29 years. Hackett penetrates and has it knocked away. Dorsey might have gotten a hand on that. USC leading Memphis by one here in New York City. I tell you, Dwight Lewis is playing really well. Came in averaging 10 points a game and struggling recently. He's got nine already. Nothing off the bench for USC. More than half of the points for Memphis have come off the bench. Well, they go to their bench. They're one of the deepest teams yep. in America. Hackett. Nice up and under. Tried to use the glass, and another rebound for Dorsey, who's on his way to a make big night on the glass. I'll tell you, he's one of the real, when you talk about guys, that's a Rambo man. He knows his role. His role is to rebound, to defend, to block shots. Look at those shoulders. And they need him. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he can play in the NFL yeah. as well. USC up a point here on Memphis. So USC hardly using the outside shot. Memphis likes the three. And again, the bench points we talked about. Joey Dorsey wears number three because of Ben Wallace. John Calipari has said to him, you've got to be Ben Wallace. You've got to go play defense and rebound the basketball. Joe's having a tough time getting to the basket. Having a real tough time getting to the basket. Tagger. And the rebound to Dwight Lewis, who's giving USC some nice minutes. Memphis has only made four two-point baskets in this game. Lewis all the way. That was a big-time drive by Lewis. Showed his quickness. I threw most of the game. They've been playing man-to-man -man on, on Rose and on Douglas Roberts and playing a triangle in terms of the other three. And it's been effective early because they've contained the two stars. See, I think psychologically sometimes, as Mayo's sitting down now, psychologically it can really affect you as a player when you know they're playing you head-to-head. -head. Yeah, and it's a defense, obviously, that USC does not, not very many teams at all play very much of that. Just something that they brought out for this game. So it may be a little bit difficult for USC to execute. It may be a little bit difficult for Memphis to solve. Well, you're not going to consistently win playing different defenses. Nothing easy around the rim at either end tonight. Derrick Rose out in transition. They do a great job sealing, cutting him off as he tries to get to the basket. Came out of Illinois, terrific high school player, wanted by everyone. Indiana, Illinois in a mix. Indiana, can you imagine with him and Eric Gordon? Oh. Eric Gordon averaging about 24 points per game. Derrick Rose oh, has hustle. yet. Great job by Hackett. Derrick Rose has yet to score in this game. Kemp. Wow. Nice Dozier. Kemp. Boy, Dozier and Taggart have been the stars tonight for the Tigers. Yeah, Dozier and Taggart, the two big guys, very active. And they're getting active looks because of the gimmick defense. Now a little pressure again. Trying to go to a big trap, and they got those big guys with their long, long arms. They got length, athleticism. I tell you, down in Memphis, they got this program in high, high gear. Chris Willard, the fine assistant commissioner in the conference was talking to him you know he gave me a big check by the way so i want to say thank you just like you did for the jimmy v let's forget let's not forget what we're here for yep. tonight it's to raise money to beat cancer so please go to 1-800-4-JIMMY-V and make a call because the life you save could be someone you love Memphis leading USC by a point, as you see the phone number on the website for the V Foundation. Let's go to Doris Burke. You guys were talking earlier about the fact that USC wants to score in the 60s. Well, many occasions, guys, when a shot goes up, they are sending two and three guys back. Tim Floyd told us guys this morning, guys, we must get ahead of the ball. We have got to give ourselves a chance to guard or nothing else matters. So they have done that. They've taken the transition game away from Memphis. I'll tell you one thing, Doris, only one team this year when you look at them, the closest game was 10 points. That was to Oklahoma when we were here. And only one club has shot over 50% against them. And that was Austin P, who they beat easily. 
Memphis hasn't played in a week. USC played in Los Angeles against Kansas on Sunday. Memphis up a point, USC basketball. See, that's another great advantage that John Calipari has in scheduling. He can really schedule to his desire and like because people will play him on national television. Yep. Devon Jefferson quiet so far tonight for the Trojans, defended by Dozier. Turned it over, trying to do a little bit too much. Douglas Roberts, and they turn it right back over again. Neither coach very happy with the execution so far. Well, you know, Tim Floyd's done a great job. Look at him shutting down right now. They're two leading scorers. Got two points between them. They're averaging 38 points a game. Taj Gibson and a block by Joey Dorsey. That's Dorsey's strength, blocking shots. Red Conference USA in the blocks a year ago. Now a held ball, and Memphis is going to get the basketball back. Let's see if that ball is coming down. Ooh, that is close. That is close. I got one eye, so I get an alibi. What do you think, buddy? Oh, good to me. They can hit the glass as well, long yeah. as it's still going up. Dorsey can take it off the glass. Yes, sir. Yeah. NBA, you can't. Right. College, you're good. Dozier looking for his offense tonight. Nice bounce pass to Dorsey. Tell you, they're playing well together, the yeah. D&D guys. They deliver. Dozier to Dorsey. All three big guys. Taggart when he's been in there as well. The big guys have really carried the, the load so far for the Tigers. I tell you, John Calipari's got to feel good about the fact he's up three and the two stars have scored two points. Yeah. Good tough man-to-man -man defense keeps them in every game. Because they play so well defensively, they always got a chance to win. Same with UCLA, even though they lost to Texas, and Texas so really surprising this year without Durant, and back with special Abrams and Augustine, Damian James. Rose the kick. And Dozier lost it out of bounds with the USC basketball. When we come back, well, the D&D guys yes, really sir, getting it done tonight for Memphis, huh? When I mentioned Texas earlier, Rick Barnes doing a heck of a job at the club. Take a look right here. There's the pass. He catches the ball. There's the conversion. Call 1-800 for Jimmy B. Make those calls, baby. John Saunders, Digger Phelps, Jay Billis, hard at work getting ready for the UPS Halftime Report. They will look back at the first game tonight, a good one, another name win over Kansas State. And uh, we will also at halftime hear your thoughts on Jim Valvano, a dear friend of yours. Well, you know, Jimmy V certainly had that dream to beat cancer, and all of us, especially the people on the, certainly Jimmy V board of directors, are working so hard. They really, they're in such a battle. They really want to beat this disease, and they're working religiously. People like the Joyce Aschenbrenners, who's a cancer survivor. People like John Leshney, Katie McDonald, all the people at the V Foundation office, the Nick Valvano's, and then the Bob Bob Lloyd's and the people who are really, really caring. Bob Lloyd was his roommate in college. He's dedicated himself to this cause. And I'll tell you this, we're not going away. So please call one 800 4 jimmy -V. You can also help me and my goal and my dream to try and raise a million dollars for Peyton Wright, a little girl who lost her life in May. Just call one 800 4 jimmy -V and say, I'd like to make a little donation in the memory of Peyton Wright. Second game of the Jimmy V Classic, the women's Jimmy V last night down in Piscataway between Rutgers and Maryland, raising a lot of money down there as well as O.J. Mayo. This is a long jumper. I tell you, Mike Krzyzewski does a phenomenal job. John Saunders, Harry Rhodes, Jeff Mason, Jim Allegro. I could go on and on with all the people, Steve Bornstein, all of them. Uh, if you like a charity where just about every penny you give goes, you give goes right to research, then the B Foundation is your charity. Out of bounds, and yet uh, another turnover. And these teams just are not executing offensively at you all. Know, I mentioned earlier Joyce Ashenbrenner, and I will tell you, as a cancer survivor, she does a phenomenal job. She does. She's dedicated herself to helping others, and she's battled cancer. In fact, I'm telling you, she has shown that she can beat that disease. Low shooting percentages, USC scoreless in the last five minutes after leading for much of the first half. Not really a well-played game. No. Defensively, both clubs getting after it. Gibson blocked from behind by Taggart. 
Taggart, Dozier, Dorsey, their size inside. Very impressive. Dozier filling the lane. Crowd wanted a walk. And now they'll get one, says Teddy Valentine. A little out of control right there. Both clubs, a lot of athletes. Defensive transition is really vital. You play Memphis, you better get back. And they've done a great job in defensive transition. Getting back. Now you're going to watch them. Watch the shot come off. Now watch them retreat. Right there. Look at all. Look at the guys right now. You can't see them, right? Southern Cal because they're all back. Not sending as many guys to the glass to make sure they don't get dumped on at the other end. Hackett looking for somebody to pass to. Things have bogged down offensively. Well, they're bogged down because of the great defensive suffocation by Memphis. Andre Allen, only about 5'9", but with a pit bull mentality, trying to defend O.J. Mayo. And with five on the shot clock, it'll stay with the Trojans. They were in a heck of a battle with Connecticut, and I thought their dif defense was the difference. Connecticut gave them all they could have in that game, but they defensively hung in there, hung in there, to ultimately breaking the game open with Chris Douglas Roberts. Look at right here now. Look at Rose stepping in with those quick hands, anticipating, diving, hustling. You can see from John Calipari's reaction to the bench how much he enjoyed that. 24-21, a low-scoring game here in New York. Don't forget, Thursday night, the inaugural Pizza Hut Big East SEC Invitational continues with a doubleheader, South Carolina and Providence Thursday at 7 on ESPN2, LSU and Villanova at 9.30 Eastern, right here on ESPN. Both games coming your way from the Wachovia Center in Philadelphia. I'll tell you, a kid that doesn't get a lot of publicity, a freshman, terrific player, down in Villanova, Corey Fisher. He can flat out score, and he and Scotty Reynolds in the backcourt, outstanding in the Big East. I'll tell you, how tough is the Big East? Notre Dame's projected to be number nine. Uh -huh. Are you kidding? That's what I'm talking about. Guys pounding each other, beating each other, while John Calabari on a bad night, they can win a lot of games in their time. Dorsey with a nice job, and then nobody there to defend Gibson. As Dorsey broke up the lob attempt, USC back within one. Their first points in almost six minutes. They need Gibson to give a point production, block some shots, score on the inside. They need that interior presence. Mayo on Rose right now. Rose remains scoreless. Allen working alongside Rose in the backcourt. Three-guard look for Memphis. Taggart's had that shot all night long. This time he'll put it on the floor. Dorsey clears some space and is fouled. See, it's tough getting out to the corners from the baseline when you're in that triangle in two, and they throw the ball out. John Calipari's got him in the right positions to try and get open shots, but it has done a marvelous job of containing the two superstars, Rose and Roberts. Number two on Hackett. Dorsey goes to the line where it is a struggle. One for seven from the line. Coming into the game. Again, much more of a rebounder shot blocker than he is a scorer. for Dorsey at the line. See Mayo right now? He finds Rose. He's playing him head-to-head. -head. They're playing a zone with the other three and playing man-to-man -man on Douglas Roberts. He's chasing him all over the court. He's in his face. He said, my man, you are not going to put a show on at the Garden, at the Mecca. And a couple of misses for Dorsey. But as much as guys like Mayo and Rose get the headlines for what they do offensively, their coaches want to see defense just as much, if not more. All coaches want to see defense just well, as much. That's how you win. That's yeah. what Roy Williams has done with his North Carolina kids, getting the buy-in, loss-in, and Ellington. The importance of focusing and playing as a team defensively. Sean Cromwell, a junior out of Memphis, into the game for USC, number 33. Good like to really for playing for Black and Lights, make some big yeah. plays. Hack and a miss. What a rebound. That's Cromwell. Wow. Where's he wow. been? Wow. Cromwell. Oh. So that's what my that's what my guys, man. That's what the guys on the playground of Memphis. Averaging less than a point per game. He is into the game and immediately jams one down. Rose with a floater. Dorsey could not tap it home. USC with a one-point lead on number two Memphis in the final minute of the first half. Davon Jefferson will go to the line. Now let's introduce people to Rashawn Cromwell then. Mr. Cromwell, I'll tell you one thing. You don't get much of a scatter report on the best a great catch on the rebound and the jam. I mean, as a kid from Memphis, you think he's all fired up? You think he's all fired up? 
Wow. And right in the face of some pretty good and big defenders. He didn't care one bit. At the line, Jefferson. Terry Jefferson's been really impressive since he's gotten into the lineup. You know, Cromwell originally from Memphis, plays hard, more lanky. He's a role-playing guy off the bench. I think a lot of media out here tonight. Dick Weiss in the house. Lenny Robbins, who did a great story today in the New York Post about Jimmy V and about what this means. I see Jim O'Connor in the house. Dan Wetzel. I, gotta, I mean, we got all the stars. It's in the big time. Media. This is big time here. <laughs> Jimmy V would be proud. Douglas Roberts not looking when Rose threw about a 40-foot pass. A sloppy play by the Tigers. Ty Calipari knows they got a battle on their hands. The tempo right now. Darvis talked about, look at this right there. No awareness. How about this, Dick? 11 turnovers and 0 for 6 from the free throw line for Memphis this afternoon. Well, this defense has taken Rose right out of the game. Have you seen Rose at all? Effective in any shape or form? Two points combined between the two supers. Mayo, tough shot. Got it. Tough shot. But tough players make tough shots. Stars make those plays, and he's a PTP. -er. A terrific defensive game plan by Tim Floyd to neutralize, to set up the tempo, and to neutralize Rose and Douglas Roberts. They're two leading scorers, averaging almost 39 points per game between them, a total of two in the first half here tonight. Let's go to Dorisburg with Tim Floyd. You were able to keep Memphis out of transition, the triangle into effective wide. Well, we got back on defense and got ahead of the ball, and you know, we only had about 24 hours to prepare, and it's just something we just threw out in the, in the shoot around this morning. I, I don't think we can stay with it for long. They're too good, and uh, but our guys were effective in it. Your offense struggled a bit. Memphis equally good on the defensive end. Anything you'd like to see different there? Well, we got to rebound it. You know, they're, they're playing volleyball with it on both boards, and we, we got to do a better job on the glass. Good luck in the second half. A five-point lead for USC over number two Memphis. We're at halftime here with the Jimmy V Classic. John Jay and Digger are coming up with the UPS Halftime Reports. We your champions cause ain't no iron team. Get the straight ball. What's the fix for? What's the young ball? What you want more? What child I dish it? What you see when I shift it? It's automatic when I whip it. Still strong on the pivot. This is my lane. Stay out of my range. Push it. Push it. Time of the second half here in New York City, the Jimmy V Classic, number two Memphis getting a battle from USC, trailing the Trojans by five as we begin the second half. And I think from everybody here in the building, Dick, and those at home who watch, outstanding job. You spoke from the heart, and you spoke beautifully about the V Foundation. Well, the key is that people call 1-800-4-JIMMY-V and say you want to make a donation and money and pay. Hey, remember you and I sat here? Memphis was down in halftime against Connecticut. They were down one, and then they were down four early in the second half. 44-40. John Calipari's going to have to make some adjustments. The key in this game, he's got to find a way to get Rose and Douglas Roberts to start to be productive. Douglas Roberts, two points in the first half. Rose, none. He's averaging 17. O.J. Mayo leads all scores. He has 10. Anderson. And way strong on the three, and the rebound of Taj Gibson. Well, Tim Floyd told you and I before the game, we're going to let the guys like Anderson try to shoot and beat us. Yep. They're going to stay with that gimmick defense. Mayo doing a great job shadowing Rose everywhere he goes. Now Gibson with a little room, and will draw the foul on Dozier as we go to Dorisburg to find out what adjustments Memphis may make. I asked John Calipari about the ineffectiveness offensively. He said, I thought we played scared, and I couldn't tell you why. We started the game with a missed layup, two missed free throws, and a missed wide open three, and never recovered. I asked him, Dick, did he want anything different against the triangle in two? And like you said, they were getting the shots they wanted against that. Look for them to try to establish Joey Dorsey. They said, he said, I might throw it to him ten straight times, but he's got to be ready to do something with it. I'll tell you this, though. Converting on the free throw line is going to be important for Tim Floyd if he wants to get out of here with that W. I mean, you play Kansas and Memphis within about 72 hours. I think that's a way to really find out an evaluation of how good your team is. One of two for Gibson. Earlier in the week, Southern Illinois, Oklahoma, very difficult stretch. That's the way you grow up, Tough. You want to have a great program, you got to play against good people. Getting all right now, see how Mayo, he's following everywhere Rose goes. 
Douglas Roberts had it and lost it underneath the basket, and back comes USC. And Gibson fumbles it out of bounds. Turnovers have been a problem for both teams, especially Memphis. O.J. Mayo, the high score in this game, and again, the shockers of the lack of points for Douglas Roberts and Rose. That's it. One for seven. Tough to win when your stars go one for seven. 0 for six as a team from the line. Another turnover. Wow, another one back. Yeah, Hackett had him and threw it behind him. We're seeing all kinds of Apple turnovers everywhere we look. <laughs> yeah. Jim Floyd says, I don't like it. That'll turn to coaches here in gray, won't it? Two NBA, but they keep their hair. They keep their hair. Where did I you disappear. and I go Oh. <laughs> John Calipari done a masterful job. And here's Tim Floyd resurrecting that program. Rick Majerus, remember, had that job. They got a new facility now. Aaron Center. Adding to their practice facilities as well. An early sub again for Memphis Anderson out and Campion early. They play a little football down there as well. They might be playing as well as anybody in the nation right now. Taggart is in for Dozier early in the second half. Hackett had it and wraps up the rebound. Another turnover. Uh, Again, they're getting opportunities, but they're turning over. And Memphis not capitalizing at all. Now the jacket comes off. Now on, the jacket comes off. <laughs> Send it to the cleaners. Frustration. Oh. The world of coaching. Yep. A wacky, wacky world. Get throw it. There it is. <laughs> A dozen turnovers committed by each team. Let me tell you about both these guys. What they both. They both are members of the President's Club. John Calipari came in two years ago, and tonight Tim Floyd joined. Which That's means they 10, donated. 10000 a year for five years, a commitment of 50000 Any other coaches that would like to call and join, give me a buzz if you know your finances, if you can afford it. Tom Crean's a member. I got guys hey, like Tom Izzo, Rick Pitino. I mean, the Who's list goes on. on. The guys that are members. 1-800-4-JIMMY-V. JimmyV.org. Two great ways to donate or find out more information about the V Foundation. As John Saunders, who's a member of the Board of Directors, mentioned at halftime, every single penny, every penny of every dollar you donate goes right to research. And John Saunders, a member also, Robert Mike Krzyzewski, Digger Phelps, who is truly with Majerus. I mean, there's so many guys that have all climbed the board. Two minutes into the second half, USC trying to pull off the upset. You're going to need to report against the number two team in the nation. Kemp, nice little step in, way short on the shot. And Douglas Roberts has it swatted away. And he could get the shot up. And Memphis, they are just struggling as much as we've ever seen them in recent years to get good looks at the basket. Derrick Rose with his first points of the night. Finally goes a little one-on-one -on -one against Mayo, and he's able to get off the shot over the top of him. Have not seen yet Rose go to the basket with one of those unbelievable drives to the goal, where he uses that incredible speed and quickness. They've taken that away from him. There's Rose getting his hand in the passing lane, and he forces the turnover. Good deflection right there by Rose. He's got to keep playing. He's got to just keep playing and not worry. Douglas Roberts. And he runs down the miss. Rose has the offensive rebound. Another Memphis turnover. I mean, it's sloppy. Both sides really having a tough time executing offensively. Hackett. And Davon Jefferson inside with a bucket. Jefferson with the big score, very athletic. This is a good basketball team. I tell you right now, Southern Cal picks sixth in the Pac-10. Wow. If there are five teams better than them in the Pac-10, they are clearly the best conference in America. Back in the garden, where right now Memphis is struggling with the USC trailing by six. They have faced a triangle and two dick. Take us inside the play. Well, you take a look right here. Here's the triangle. See, this is what we talk about a triangle. They play a zone, and then they play head to head, man to man, on Rose and on right now Douglas Roberts. Take a look at it. And then they're going to give help to one another. They're allowing other people to beat them. What they're simply saying is, we are not going to allow the stars to beat us. So a guy like Camp may have to step up, and he knocks down a three. Well, see, those kind of people are going to get open shots to complimentary players. I know when I coach, and we faced that when I had some great kids like Durod and Long and Tyler, if we faced the triangle and two, I would run my normal man offense and try to get some movement and get some great shots. So far, Memphis, not that they have looked confused, but 
They have really struggled to get good shots. Turnovers haven't helped either team. Jefferson, a strong rebound, and Dorsey might have gotten a hand on that. I think we're going to see a little spurt here by Memphis. I think we're going to see a little spurt. We see a little special bounce now. Mayo defending Rose. Kept a guy that could put points on the board here against this defense. Rose trying to shake Mayo, missed the shot. And it's USC basketball. He's got to be careful to try to go one-on-one. -on -one. He's got to stay within the confines of the offense. Only 29 points thus far for Memphis. They're down three, a part of Jimmy V. Week, the phone number, the website. Back here with the Garden, a part of Jimmy V. Week is the Jimmy V. Classic with USC leading Memphis by three. Well, Sidney Lowe is the captain of Jim Valvano's 1983 National Championship team. He talks about Jimmy V. enjoying the moment. Coach got off first, and he got off, and they just went nuts and started cheering for him. And then a couple of players, we came off, and they were sitting there waiting for everyone to get off. Then all of a sudden, we see Coach got off again. And we're just trying to figure out how did he do that. Well, what happened, he got off on the front door of the bus, and the applause was so great that he walked down, got, went in the back door, and came out a second time and got a second applause. Now, it was ultimate jubilation that day when they upset Houston and won the national championship. Hard to believe it's almost 25 years ago. Wow, it really is. Time has really flown. You cannot believe the way the time has disappeared. You know, Derek Wittenberg, Sydney's partner, coaching that Florida member of the President's Club, and a guy that's done a great job for the V Foundation. And don't forget the job that's been done by Pam Valvano. Jimmy's wife, she has been so instrumental from the get-go and so vital to the foundation. Hackett is fouled by Derrick Rose, a push out on the perimeter. It was almost a, a 10 second violation as USC, did they get it over in time? Got to get it, it over is. before 25. See with the deflection, the time doesn't stop. Oh, close, close. They've done a great job keeping shots away from Mayo as yeah. well. So, I mean, it's a two-sided sword. I mean, he came back and he scored. Oh, oh, what a great pass. Hello, hello. I mean, could there be a little surprise here tonight? Southern Cal coming off that loss to Kansas. O.J. Mayo to Davon Jefferson. Trojans by five. I'll tell you, the Trojans are going to have a lot to cheer about, and I don't mean just for Mr. Booty throwing the pass. Kemp. And Taj Gibson got a piece of that. That's what Gibson does well. He can really reject shots. He's like a human eraser. Some great matchups when he hooks up with Kevin Love. Jefferson again. And it will stay at this end of the floor. Play the key tonight. They have not allowed easy layups by Memphis in transition. There's the reverse jam. A little high low. Look at a great touch. The side by Mayo. The great look. But they don't think about it. How many fast break layups have you seen right. Right. by Memphis? They have controlled the tempo of this game. And two more points. O.J. Mayo knocks one down from close range. John Calipari's kids got to really step it up. I mean, there's zero fast break points right now That's by Memphis. For a team that loves to get out oh, of transition like, and is awfully good at it. Well, they average 86 points a game. Yep. Dozier, he's had the mid-range jumper going in on. Well, Dave, that's going to be over. Against that triangle of two, you're going to have those kind of wide-open looks for your role players. And the role players lead him to victory, though. Here comes Lewis off the screen. Tell you one thing, their defense is not creating the turnover and generating any offense off their defense. And that's another way they usually score John Calipari's kicks. Tough shot. See, notice the way they get back. Look how quickly they retreat. A terrific job of coaching and getting them back defensively. Oh, the yeah. Lob. There's the first fast break. Transition. The lob, the jam. Now comes the full court pressure. Here comes the speed, the quickness. Derrick Rose is going to be called for the foul, but a pretty impressive play between CDR and Joey Dorsey. Well, you know, Memphis wants to speed the game up. They want to. There's the little lob inside. There's the jam. 
we'll talk about it as we mentioned at practice a lot. When in doubt, lob it up to the rim, and they feel they've got the athletes to go get it. They really do. They're long, lean, and athletic. Here comes a little trap. They gotta go diagonal, go the opposite way, so you go away from the trap. USC for a very young team, playing with a lot of boys tonight. Hackett. And Dorsey, a good box out for the rebound. That was a terrific job of executing. They got the open shot for Hackett, but he didn't convert. Keep in mind, the top six for the Trojans, Dick, are all freshmen or sophomores. Try the lob again, and that time Jefferson sniffed it out. Jefferson really had that play. Oh, could not put the squeeze on the pass. Oh. Now they wanted a walk. And a block will go against USC's Daniel Hackett. Three-point lead for USC. Let's go to Doris Burke. A little more on O.J. Mayo and his defense, Doris. Yeah, this morning, Tim Floyd told my guy, his guys, close on the waist. So look where he's sitting, right on his waist. He said, I don't want you looking anywhere else. Close on the waist, fill up their numbers. Dick, they have been sensational on that side of the ball. Well, you know, Doris, John Calipari is utilizing some of the offensive concepts of Vance Warburg, who had a phenomenal record at Fresno City Junior College, now the head coach of Pepperdine. And basically, his philosophy is, have lanes and be able to drive in those lanes and utilize them with an awareness where your teammates are at all times if help comes. Well, tonight, Southern Cal, because of their defensive gimmick that they use in the triangle and two, they have done a great job taking away some of those driving lanes. Game two of the Jimmy V Classic from New York City. Notre Dame beating Kansas State in a game one tonight. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Doris Burke here at Madison Square Garden. Is there an upset brewing here tonight? The Trojans leading number two match. Memphis. Usually a high octane offense, Dick, but not tonight for the yeah. Tigers. Well, that's because of the great defensive effort by certainly Southern Cal in the game plan and controlling tempo in the game. There's 18 unbeaten teams right now. Memphis certainly one of them. There's 18 unbeatens left in college basketball. St. Mary's out of California undefeated. Patty Mills, he can shoot it. Coach Randy Bennett's club. Dick, that last foul on Taj Gibson, his third. As you mentioned earlier, he has fouled out of each of their last two games, and that third foul is going to bring him out of the game right now. Rashawn Cromwell, who didn't play much in the first half, but had a huge dunk when he was in there, comes back into the game. Well, that can be big. We're right there to score right now. He goes out 36-33 with 12-19 on the clock. Matt. Offensive rebound, Douglas Roberts. Nice job. See, now if Gibson's in there, that shot may not come up. That may not have gotten that shot. Memphis back within one. I think it's big with Gibson out of the lineup. They're trying to trap them on the speed, the tempo of the game. Don't you think the Trojans have done a great job handling it? Though? Absolutely. They got some good ball. Yes. When they turn the ball over, it's been hurrying and rushing in transition or around the rim, but they've handled the pressure well. Look at that ball. execution. I'll tell you one thing that's impressed me about Mayo here. I really thought that Mayo would come to the garden and try to put on a one-on-one -on -one show to really be spectacular, but he is playing within the confines of their offense. And USC has done an outstanding job shutting down the top two scores for Memphis so far tonight. The Trojans lead by one. This ESPN telecast is available in a mesmerizing high definition on ESPN HD presented by Olivia. Holiday season upon us. The Lincoln Center here wow. in Manhattan. Dan Schulman, Dick Vitale, Doris Burke, and friends here for the Jimmy V Classic. Radio City. Hey, talking about those 18 unbeaten teams. Miami's undefeated. Frank Hates Club 7 and Sip. What about Vanderbilt? They're 7 and Sip. Think about California. I mean, they're unbeaten right now. Ben Lawrence Club. Washington State unbeaten. I mean, it's really terrific right now. Some of the college basketball. The only problem, the only dilemma, a writer wrote about it in St. Petersburg. Tom Jones, fine writer. He says, Dickie Vitale, Dickie V, and a lather because you know what? None of us care about basketball right now. Well, he's wrong. We do care, but he's right about one thing. I wish that basketball would start after Thanksgiving because I think so many great games are lost because everybody involved, the BCS, which turned out to be the BS because of all the <laughs> nonsense. I mean, how could you be number one in the nation? Think about this. Yeah. Number one Missouri at halftime, they're still number one in their game against Oklahoma. And 24 hours later, they don't make a major bowl, one of the eight teams. 
That tells you a playoff is needed, utilizing the bowl system, even though the BCS has come a long way from where it started. Derrick Rose. Again, a very high degree of difficulty, Dick. We have seen that a lot in the games in which we have seen Rose. A little run and run over here by his two Piper Cavies. And then hit the head. You gotta give both guys some credit for the work they put the on the defensive end tonight yeah. as well. I mean, they're and working hard. And they're really playing within the confines of the team concept. They're not trying to make an individual, you know, making himself the story and the star. Angelo Johnson, 5'11", freshman out of Minneapolis, number one, back into the game for the Trojans. You can play it all fine, no matter where you're from. for the ball we've got a moving screen i believe it is casey cunningham of usc who got called for the foul yeah he was moving again you got to be stationary as i told you earlier watching mayo watching rose i firmly believe that the kids coming out of high school if they're good enough and they want to go to the nba they should be allowed to go but once a kid enters college he should have to stay for three years to get some stability and eliminate the rest of player for one year kind of deal because really you're supposed to go to college because you want to go a lot of these kids think about it when the second semester comes, will they go to class? Will they go to class? It's been a concern of some coaches. Bob Knight has spoken out about that a lot. Uh, my bad, by the way, foul on Cunningham. Rashawn Cromwell picked up the foul. Now a foul on Dorsey of Memphis as Anderson comes in and back goes out for the Tigers. A team that averages 86 points per game has 35 right now. Well, that's because, again, tempo. You look at Kansas. Kansas very explosive offensive club. They had to win a game in the 50s yep. on the road, but they found the way to win. Mario Chalmers made a big three late in that game. And imagine how much better Kansas might even be when Sharon Collins comes back in January. Again, John Calipari warned his team at shoot around today. He said, guys, they want it in the 50s. We want it in the 90s. And right now, it's headed for the 50s. Well, one of the reasons that's happened is because they've been in control of the score. If they would have jumped out early and Memphis would have got a 10, 12 point lead early and forced them to play catch up, it would have been a different tempo of the game. So much about the game of basketball is the speed of the game, Dan. Rose to the bench as Mayo knocks down the free throw for his 13th point of the night. I can't remember him taking a bad shot yet tonight. Do you? No, I don't think so. He's taken a couple of deep jumpers. He had one fading away in the corner, but most of them, as you say, within the framework of the offense. He was 6 for 21 against Kansas, and one of the concerns was that he did take some shots that weren't within the offense. And with five turnovers as well. Whereas Rose is more of a pure point guard. Mayo, you call him a lead guard, a scoring guard. Nice pass there, and Dozier finishes from Dorsey, but... Uh, Mayo is he a one, a two, a combo? He's a he's a different kind of a player than Derrick Rose. He's a player. He's a flat out player. He's versatile. He's multi-dimensional. Memphis already has committed seven fouls, so they're in the bonus. And the Tigers trying to step up the pressure. Hackett's done a nice job handling it. Well, he does. He really handles the ball well. Yep. I told you earlier, his dad was a big star at Syracuse. Played for Roy Danford, who then left and went to Tulane and. In came that young guy was an assistant by the name of James Bayhound, and the rest is history. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, go to the Naismith and see Mr. Bayhound right there in Shrine. Dorsey called for the foul. Davon Jefferson had one big dunk tonight, and Dorsey wanted to make sure he didn't have another. Put him on a line right here. He's got to convert. That's the contact. Dorsey loves contact. Very physical. Now he's attacking defensively. Now you get down to conversions. Yep. Converting on that free throw line. Number three on Dorsey. I'm not sure those who make contact with Dorsey love contact as much <laughs> as he does because he is built like a linebacker. Take a look at the free throw situation. Wow. 0 for wow. 6 for Memphis. Old All of that was six. in the first half. Dorsey, remember my all Rambo team? With three fouls and 9.54 to go, he will stay. Jefferson, a nice stroke from the line. 
Van Jefferson's going to be a solid player. Remember, he didn't play for two years, so this is all new to him in terms of playing organized, five on five. Took a while to get his academics in order. Dozier's been the guy knocking down jump shots. He's been option number three tonight for Memphis with options one and two. See the open one? Look at the open shots. Yep. You get all kinds of open shots. There's a little hesitation, but you got to be able to make those shots from the wings. They want those guys to try to beat them. That's the whole game plan, Floyd. Tim Floyd's game plan is we are not allowing Rose and Douglas Roberts to beat us. So if you're somebody who's going to play Memphis later on in the oh, season, look at you Jefferson again. Is. Jefferson is not a big time athlete. Oh, they're going to love him down there. I know Pete Carroll's got some great athletes, but this guy is going to be special. It's saying something if you're the high riser in this game, and right now he's the guy. The one thing we haven't seen at Memphis, which really is one of their keys, is a spurt. Dorsey see, throws it away. Allen wasn't expecting the pass. They look a little confused. They do. Me. After they've been seeing the same defense for 30 minutes. Mayo spins, but it misses the tough layup. There's a little frustration out there offensively. Douglas Roberts nice with a reverse. Now that's good execution right there. Douglas Roberts using the left hand. Push the ball up the floor, beat the defense before it can initiate. Taj Gibson getting set to come back in for USC. Derrick Rose getting set to come back in for Memphis. You keep waiting to see one of those spurts and you don't see it. Jefferson throws it away. Antonio Anderson all the way. It's now a two-point game. That's Memphis basketball. We're going to see him against Georgetown when we go down to Memphis. That's their kind of basketball. Generate offense off their defense. That's December 22nd, noon Eastern. A little holiday special for you. Hackett. And one. And if it's Dorsey, it's his fourth. What a strong drive by Hackett. Utilizing his right hand, he's a lefty. Takes it up super strong to the goal. Takes it right at Dorsey and gets the fourth foul on Dorsey. A huge bucket for USC and wow. a huge foul, Dick, for Memphis. There he is. Give it all he gets to bounce his way. Coming. What about Davon Jefferson? Way, it goes to Jefferson away. with the high rise on the jab. The jab. So much more to gain. Push it, push it, push it. Give it all. Time now for tonight's PlayStation 3 game track. A low-scoring game here with a lot of turnovers. USC trying to pull off the upset. 14 for O.J. Mayo, plus 10 on the glass for the Trojans. And Robert Dozier, the leading scorer for Memphis, because Chris Douglas Roberts and Derrick Rose have been shut down for most of the night. Well, uh, USC also getting some good work out of Daniel Hackett, a guy coming back from a broken job playing well tonight. For more on him, let's go back to Doris Burke. Well, you guys talked earlier about his father, Rudy, who had a career over in Italy, and so that is exactly where Daniel grew up. I asked him about the difficulties when he came over here. There's Rudy, a member of the strength and conditioning staff. I said, what was the most difficult part? He said, come on, the language. I did not know a lot of English. I, I'm fluent in Italian. That's my first language. Two, Dick, you can appreciate this, the food. He liked the paisans <laughs> over there. He liked all the lasagna. I ate a great Italian restaurant last night. Becco's, what a terrific restaurant here in New York City. I will tell you this, though. Southern count. think about this. Last year they went to the Sweet 16. They beat Arkansas. My memory tells me they beat Texas as well. And they got beat by North Carolina. And then they lose the likes of Pruitt and Young. And I will tell you, bring it in O.J. Mayo. He is certainly going to dazzle him out, and he knows how to play. Davon Jefferson, as we've seen, doesn't hurt the Trojan cause either. Dozier. And the tip is good. I think that was Rose underneath there with the left hand. Yeah, Rose getting out of the inside, using that great size from the guard slot. Stepping up the pressure, and again, USC. Pretty calmly, Taj Gibson helping out with some oh, handling. Oh, almost forced to turn over. See, something they do, they really scramble defensively, and they really frustrate teams. Oh, look at a possible little layup. That's Memphis basketball. Run, baby, run. Fill the lanes. It's been a struggle all night, but they're only down one with seven on the clock. Willie Kemp with the layup. More pressure from the Tigers. See, they want him to race up and down the court. Smart play right there. Angelo Johnson helps set it up. Kemp certainly one of the premier roll eight specialists. Guy that started last year, now coming off the bench. Like John Shire is. Travis Walton in Michigan State. 
Anticipation by Rose. Three on two Memphis. And the Tigers take the lead. He might get a timeout on Get a T.O., baby, Mr. Floyd. Get a timeout. There's the little spurt of Memphis. There's the little spurt. They've been waiting for this. With defense and transition. Defense and transition. Something that is vital. Using their defense as an offensive system. See, if you have good defense, a very simple formula. Defense equals offense. Like the formula? I like that formula. Like that formula? Really camp from Derrick Rose, and then Rose deflected it away, and another fast break bump. And they're on a 10 3 run right now, something we have not seen out of Memphis all night long. First lead for Memphis since late in the first half as they're up one on USC, trying to maintain their unbeaten record and their number two ranking. Joey Dorsey, remember, is on the bench with four fouls, but Memphis has had this little spurt with Dorsey sitting out with foul trouble. Hey! Dozier and Taggart up front. Douglas Roberts, Rose, also in there along with Kim. Now USC has to respond, and again, remember how young they are. Virtually every player who plays for them is either a freshman or a sophomore, and is one of the freshmen, O.J. Mayo, getting what should be a brief stint on the bench. Trust me, brief, 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 brief. They're getting rattled right now. They're really getting rattled against that pressure. There's that pressure. We talk about Memphis, their tenacious defense. John Calipari's kids, he will not let them stop scrapping and clawing. That's his personality. Derrick Rose has made some big plays in the last couple of minutes. He did it at Massachusetts. Had the unfortunate situation where Canby got involved with an agent. Into the final four. Back into the fadeaway. Jefferson right into Taggart. And Rose turns oh, it back over, over to Hackett. Hackett's got himself an easy deuce. Rose got careless with the rock in his hand. USC back within one, five and a half to go. They just had a game like this against Kansas. It was Heartbreak Hotel and home at the end of that game. Kansas beating USC 59 to 55 just 48 hours ago. Dozier from the foul line. And the rebound to Jefferson. Now the Trojans can take the lead. Jefferson's going to be a special player, not just an ordinary player. He's so is double double, big 10 and 10. He's going to be a special player. You have to understand that he's not really familiar with all the system yet. He's familiar with jumping up over top of everybody and that's hugging a, it home. That's pretty good yeah. system. Lewis. Jefferson, another rebound and a good decision to kick it out. He's doing a great job on the offensive boards. It shows he's very aggressive. Again, no mayo on the floor right now. Been out a couple of minutes. No mustard on the floor either. <laughs> Gibson, blocked from behind by Taggart. Gibson again, blocked oh. again. Gibson inside. Again, a little closer than he likes to give out blocking shots. On Dozier. I mean, they're right in Rose's face. I mean, he is having a tough time everywhere he goes. There's a guy right in his face trying to not let him get the ball. Look at this. Angelo Johnson right now. Giving up some size. Camp wide open. Way long. USC with a chance to run. No call. And wow. And Johnson, the smallest man on the floor, will go to the line. I tell you, the Southern Cal kids getting on the offensive boards, really playing aggressive. Cannot believe no call. Now one coach probably wanted a block. The other one probably wanted oh. a charge. So the ref says, you know what? I don't know which way to call it. So I just let it go. Down to the I wire. Just let it go. We got a good finish going to come up here. We're back here. we got a game right down to the wire. It's been a fun night of basketball in New York City, but more importantly, it's been for a great cause, the Jimmy V Classic. 
all kinds of money raised tonight and also try to raise awareness you talked about Peyton Wright so passionately at halftime and all the things that have been done but still what needs to be done to help eradicate this disease well we're going to really try all of us I really want to give a lot of credit to the Valvano family I mean you talk about Pam Valvano I think the involvement of the family has really become contagious with everyone the dedication I mean from you talk about Pam you talk about the children Jamie Leanne Nicole you talk about Nick Valvano the brother everybody involved setting the tone 1-800-4-JIMMY-V make that call and remember if you want to help me with my million dollars in terms of helping kids battling cancer just simply stay I want to make a donation in memory of Peyton Wright hey Dan you know what's the key in this game possibly down the stretch Memphis has right now a situation where they're, they're in a bonus when you talk about USC. On the other side, Memphis is not going to shoot free throws because USC only has three right. fouls. But Memphis is 0 for 6 on the free throw. Have not made a free throw. USC struggled with free throws in their close loss to Kansas on Sunday night. USC is only 66% as a team this year. Memphis is only 59%. I would drive a coach bananas. That helped me to lose my hair. I mean, you go in there, you work on it. You work on giving an X number to shoot. Mr. Mayo coming in. And we are tied at 49, under four to go here with the Garden. Notre Dame beating Kansas State by nine in our first game. And USC trying to knock off number two Memphis here with the nightcap. Good win for the Fighting Irish. Their first win. The call real quality win this year. And a big night from Luke Herringote and from Kyle McElarney as well. Anderson and you could see that Gibson got a finger on that three-point attempt the big guy got way out to the corner well team Floyd told us they're gonna let Anderson shoot they're gonna allow him to shoot from the perimeter hey number one went down UCLA they went down at home to Texas with number two go down that's the big question Dozier and a block from behind Davon Jefferson comes up with a block Memphis maintains possession Dozier again, and he's fouled. Nice diagonal pass. Trying to play a little unselfish. Both these clubs showing that they're really about the team. Billy Donovan philosophy. When you look at Florida, three guys to the NBA. Average only 13 points a game. Their star with scorer was Torian Green with 14. Showing that he had great balance. Look at that free throw line. Look at that free throw line. 0 for 6. John Calipari would rather not. There you go. First of the night as a team for a guy who has struggled. But you know, in fairness to John Calipari's kids, if you were to chart them at the end of the year last year and a run to the Elite Eight, in the last five minutes, the numbers got so much higher than what their numbers were during the year. The foul dick, by the way, was on Taj Gibson. So he's got four, and Joey Dorsey of Memphis four. has four. One of two. Sports Center is coming up next here on ESPN. A big trade in baseball among the stories you'll hear about. Trying to stay within their offense. Trying to get some good shots. But now you want Mayo to look for some shots. Anderson trying to deny it. Again, Anderson at 6'6", a good athlete, a good defender. He's an excellent defender. He's very long. NBA distance three. That might be his first bad shot yep. tonight. Yep. First bad shot. It was not available. Anderson was right square with him. Had the long, long arms, the long reach. And was carried that ball. And Mayo working on Rose. That's what's impressed me about Mayo. He has not stopped playing defense. Anderson off to Dorsey. Yes. Wide open. With that triangle in two, you're going to get those kind of looks. You're going to, you're going to give something, you're going to take something. And the Memphis off offense predicated on driving, drawing, and then kicking to the open guy. That's what Anderson did beautifully there. Hey, buddy, when's the last time they were up three? Hackett almost traveled. A kick ball. Well, Antonio Anderson... Not a big-time offensive performer, but he did a great job finding Dorsey. See, getting into the lane. That's their game. Find the driving lane and be aware where your teammate is on the floor. He knew as he went down that lane that the defense would rotate over, but he had an awareness where his teammate was. Timeout on the floor. USC down to one. It'll be USC basketball. Two minutes to go. 18 on the shot clock. They're down by three. And again, freshmen and sophomores, freshmen and sophomores, can they find the poise to run their stuff and get good shots. Yeah, I really think they can. I think again, when we take a look right here, Memphis 
leading scorers, struggling big time, averaging 38 a game, only 12 tonight. But as I said, why John Calabari will get the last laugh is even when you look at the seven games against the major opponents, if he went four and three, which he'll not accept four and three, lose those three, yep. at the most he'll lose one or two games in conference play, they got a phenomenal year. <laughs> Why would he ever want to leave? Let's go to Doris Burke. Well, remember, Tim Floyd's team struggled with late game situation last time out. They had poor turnovers, poor shot selection. Let's see in the last two minutes. Have they learned anything, guys? I think that's youth and also playing against a brilliant team like Kansas. Just had to use their last time out. Trojans are out of timeouts after being unable to get the ball in. No matter what the result is here tonight, you grow as a team playing the kind of people they've played. They have played some tough opponents early this year, and that's going to help them big time. When you face the likes of Southern Illinois, Miami of Ohio, Oklahoma, Kansas, now Memphis, you're going to grow as a team. Yep. Sports Center is up next year on ESPN with Linda Cohn and Neil Everett. Among the stories you'll see, a, a look at a lot of the freshmen that we have seen tonight here in New York. The fallout from the Patriots win over Baltimore last night. And yes, baseball fans, Dontrell and Miguel Cabrera are now Detroit Tigers. Wow, the Tigers are going to celebrate, but Neil should celebrate working with Linda. Wow, one of my favorites. <laughs> John Calipari's team is now up by oh, three. Oh, Coach oh, Cal's turning oh, into Coach Tark. Oh, look at this here, Tark. <laughs> hey, Tark, he's biting the towel. Saw Jerry down in Vegas. He still really follows the game religiously. So it now, look at Calipari chewing the towel. All of Mr. Tark came. You talked about the non-conference scheduling. Because their league is not as difficult as the BCS leagues, as the big six that a lot of their competitors play in, they can schedule tougher outside the conference, and they've certainly done that. Well, they got to do that because obviously when you're talking league play they're not going to get the competitiveness that you need to prepare in terms of tournament play well mark few and john calipari a nice arrangement they realize they need each other they'll play and not in december they want to play in february closer to tournament time every year they need each other we need each other <laughs> <laughs> mayo tough one follows it up and anderson comes up with it now you want to manage the clock you want to play with control Play with some savvy, get good spacing. Now comes legit man to man. This is where Rose should really like the prospect. They're still going to have to knock down some free throws, though, at some point. Exactly. You want to put him, if I were Tim Floyd, I want to put him on a free throw. I want to put him on Jimmy V. I want to do the Jimmy V philosophy like he did against Fly Slamma Jam. USC's only committed four fouls in the half. So they, they can give some fouls. Yep. They can really dig in and play yeah. aggressively. Yeah. Right now, they're looking for a. A good 35 and a turnover. At the buzzer, the shot is short. It's a shot clock violation. Good work defensively by USC. Tim Floyd's really got them buying into the defensive philosophy. And with that, you're going to win a lot of games because he's got quality players as well. Lewis out. Johnson in for USC. A three can tie it. Last two possessions, their, their offense has kind of degenerated into one-on-one -on -one stuff. And it's going to be Rose, I believe. Carl Hill's got a holding call. Jack Calabari can't believe it. Someone got a silly. We stopped the clock. Put him on a free throw line. Double bonus. So it's two shots. Hack it to the line. Silly. See, you're stopping the clock. You got to think. So many kids have no awareness to what the time is left, what the score situation. You got to know score and you got to know time. It's a competitor. He's played well and he's played hard tonight. He's had some turnover issues, as just about everybody in this game has had. But they got, they got some nice players. Yeah. When you talk about Hackett, and you certainly talk about Jefferson and Gibson, and obviously Mayo. Going to be some great games in the Pac-10 this year. Two big free throws. I think from top to bottom, you got to give the respect to the Pac-10. Right now, I believe top to bottom, they're the best. Rose and Mayo on one another right now. Rose spread, gives it up. Spread the court. Take high percentage shots. You got the one point lead. You got the basketball. And we have a timeout taken by Memphis. 45 seconds left. You're up one. You got the ball. 
Uh, if you're, if you're John Calipari, what kind of a shot? You spread the court, you use some clock, but then what kind of a shot do you ultimately well, want? You want to spread the court, you hope to get some help on your dribble penetration. He's going to utilize his offensive concept, which is to get into the driving lane. The driving lane, and be aware where your teammates are on the floor. You want to convert, you want to score here, and then play solid, tough, man-to-man -man defense. A lot of coaches are going to look at the way that USC has played Memphis, and they may not have the personnel to do it, but a lot of teams might try to play Memphis the way the Trojans have. Well, there's the difference. You made one question, statement that you made. The difference is the quality players. You can have that philosophy and try to do that, but if you if you don't have the kind of athletes that Southern Cal has, you have no way you're going to control tempo like that. 19 seconds on the shot clock, 45 in the game. Memphis with the ball and a one-point lead. This is the way you grew up as a team, too, for John Calipari. This year, the closest game has been a 10-point game against Oklahoma. Dozier to inbound for the Tigers. You want to get the ball in Rose's hands. You want him to utilize his speed and quickness to drive. To set a high screen for him. So you try to get the driving lane. They love the driving lane. Douglas Roberts got it back. And he's fouled by Gibson. Gibson definitely got ball, but he got the body before, and that's going to be all for Taj Gibson. Well, there's what I talked about. Spread the core, utilize your dribble drive, and that's what they do really well. Get in the lane, get it to the wing player, the All-American candidate, Chris Douglas Roberts. He goes back the second time, draws the contact. And got him with the left arm first, then blocked the shot with the right. As we talked about, they love finding a lane. Finding a lane they can drive, know where the people are with spacing, and Gibson fouled out, goes out of the ball game. They're human eraser. So Chris Douglas Roberts. That's three consecutive games he has fouled out. That's right. Chris Douglas Roberts will be going to the line. Gibson with four block shots tonight. Douglas Roberts, a 75% of free throw shooter, so that's good news for John Calipari after the dreadful effort on the line by the Tigers so far tonight. You know, Gibson's totaled nine points the last three games, getting five. He's too talented, too important to this club. He's really got to get himself mentally back being the player he showed last year as he showed a lot of talent. Memphis, one of eight from the line. Wow. Douglas Roberts has not attempted a free throw tonight. Look at him, one for eight. Wow. Two shots coming. That's ugly. But he's the guy, if you're John Calipari, you don't mind seeing him on a free throw line. That's why he's their premier guy on the wing. He's a driver, a slasher. Talked about the free throw being their enemy, but here it is now. Douglas Roberts is turning into being their friend. Now remember, converted both. USC has no timeouts. So do they look for a quick one? First, well, they got to get the ball over. You take the three if the three is available in your offense, but if you can get a quick douche, you take the quick deuce. Rose defending Mayo, who picks up his dribble. Jefferson, a tough catch. A little bit out of rhythm right here. And Jefferson had one thing in mind. He, he sometimes just puts his head down and pulls right to the rim. Now he's got to convert on that free throw line. Still got plenty of time with 17 ticks on the clock. Now Dorsey five has five fouled yep. out. Both big guys go to the sideline. Take away post presence defensively. See, he was just made his mind. He was going one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. The ball, he was out of control. You can't see him there, but Angelo Johnson was, I mean, wide, wide open, open on the yeah. wing beyond the arc. So Dorsey fouls out. See, we got to watch right here when he goes down the lane, but he's out of control. See, they're going to give some help. Now watch this. Look on the left. Look at yeah, Johnson. Right here. He, he wants the ball way back here in the corner. They don't see him. he got his head down. But Jefferson will get to the line for a couple of free throws. 17 seconds left. He can shoot the three also, Johnson. Jefferson, four of four from the line tonight. He's going to be a special player. He really is. I think you see this guy when they get into the Pac-10 season. He's got the nice stroke. Now, Dick, Dick, if USC doesn't get a quick steal, they're still not in the bonus. They've got to foul two more times before they send Memphis to the line. Well, they could be real aggressive. you got to try aggressively to get the steal yeah. and foul. you got to be aggressive. Two big free throws for the freshman. And they tried to foul, didn't get the call. And now Memphis running off some precious seconds. Good job spacing. 
And again, if you're John Calipari, you're pretty happy with Chris Douglas yes, Rutledge being the guy going to the line. He's the guy he wants on the free throw line, and they get the ball in the right guy's hands. Now look at this here. They wanted the bump right there. Oh, and forgive me, that's the sixth foul, so Douglas Roberts not going to the one line. More, yep. Got one more to give. But they ran off over seven seconds. Got one more to give here. Got a foul right away. You can't wait. Everybody jockeying for position. As soon as that ball comes in play. And now CDR will go to the line for the one and one. Even smart. if he makes both, it's a one possession but, game. You, you talk about basketball IQ, you talk about being smart, you talk about really how you got to be intelligent on the floor late in the game. That's a perfect example. They made sure the ball went in the hands of their best free throw shooter. With Taggart and Dozier up there for Memphis on a miss, you got to be awfully concerned about the offensive rebound. Well, you know, look at the head right now, Dan. Remember this. If he converts both, you still got a shot with the three, and you got time to run it up the court. Missed it. Oh, they got a chance here. They got it, and a foul. Foul called. John Calabria can't believe it. That's a pretty heavy play there by Daniel Hack. Well, now he's got to look ahead. He's got to look ahead and forecast. He's got to set himself. If he converts these two and we're down, we have to come up with a play with five seconds on the clock. A lot of coaching strategy going on now. Tom not happy right there. That's a foul. He reached in on him. Yes, sir. Calipari cannot be happy. 80 feet away from the basket. 80 feet away, John Calipari, a little frustration right there. So Daniel Hackett will get two free throws. It's double bonus for USC. He'll get two free throws. They're down one, just under six seconds to go. He's a talented player. I tell you, the reason this game is close is twofold. Tempo has been controlled by Southern Cal, and their defensive game plan, that triangle of two, really neutralized the scoring ability of Rose and Roberts. And they had to have better second halves to get to these numbers. Douglas Roberts with only two. eight. Yeah, he had two at the half. Rose didn't have any at the half. Hackett is a good free throw shooter, and he is three of three from the line tonight. Yeah, he's a guy you want to see on the line if you're a Southern Cal fan. Gonna jump with joy if he knocks these down, but they're gonna lock up defensively because with the quickness that Memphis has, 5.9 is time for them to get a good shot. They've got one timeout. Memphis has one timeout should they choose to use it. Two shots for Hackett. Hey, nice stroke. That's his dad. Dad says, that's my guy. Moody, a big star at Syracuse. Now out there at Southern Cal. How about USC 17 of 20 from the line wow. of Memphis, 3 of 11. Do you think that's a difference? We talk about free throw shooting. Oh, boy. Oh, oh, they got a chance to win the game. Is Rose here. going end to end? You go end to end. There's For the, the win. Oh, we're going OT, baby. <laughs> Do you believe it? We're going OT, baby. Making us work a little over time. <laughs> they got a good shot with five yeah. ticks on the clock. Hackett walking off the floor, dejected that he missed that second free throw. Well, on the other side, Chris Douglas Roberts could be a little dejected for that foul, 80 feet away from the basket. Dozier had a pretty good look, and he's knocked down some jumpers tonight. He had the open look. Overtime is on the way. USC and Memphis all tied up at 54. We've got overtime coming here at Madison Square Garden in the second game of the Jimmy V Classic. USC and Memphis all tied up at 54. Sports Center comes your way as soon as the game is over. The 11, Linda Cohn, will talk about some of the super freshmen who played tonight around a major college basketball. Some fallout from last night's Patriots win and the big trade involving the Tigers and the Marlins. But first, five minutes at least of extra basketball here in New York. And let's uh, refresh everybody's memory. Taj Gibson has fouled out for Joe USC. Dorsey. Joey Dorsey has fouled out for Memphis. Now, so it's a, a big guy aside. So maybe that's an even trade for these two teams. Both teams had chances in the closing minute to really make plays to win the game, but both teams missed some shots, missed some free throws. Well, silly foul. But I, certainly when you think about Chris Douglas Roberts, especially fouling 80 feet from the basket. 
Emmanuel Hackett just came up short on a free throw attempt, but Memphis did an excellent job in getting a good shot with a chance to win. It has not been a pretty game by any stretch of the oh, imagination, absolutely. but the defense has been tough, the effort has been great, and we've got overtime here at the Garden. And O.J. Mayo, who came out really on fire, have done a great job keeping shots away from here in the second half. Mayo with 10 in the first half, 14 as we go to overtime, and Johnson comes down with the rebound on the miss by Rose. He's a good little handler, quick. Not a starter, but getting crunch time minutes, as they say. It's not who starts, it's who finishes. Yeah, you want the special people on the floor late in the game. People that can take you to that winner's circle. Mayo. And the rebound by Taggart. Defense did a great job beating this spot. There's a bump out there. And Johnson commits the foul. His second. And Memphis will go to the line. Memphis 6 0 on the season. As you mentioned, they've won each of their previous six games by at least 10 points. USC coming off a close loss to Kansas on Sunday. Well, UCLA lost that heartbreaker to Texas. Texas went on a road, played brilliantly. Damian James with the big play in the end. Number one. So now number two is fighting for survival. Rose knocks down the first. Okay, he's had a tough night getting any kind of open looks. He likes to go coast to coast, use that ultra speed, that quickness. Yep. They've done a terrific job staying in front of him, not allowing him to create penetration. Now two big makes at the line for the Tigers. Haven't said that much tonight as they go up a deuce. I tell you, they're a different team shooting late in the game. They really are. As the full court trap. They were a double team on a basketball and scrap back to man to man. Back it's pretty tough, huh? Getting the ball up against the pressure. That's a good job, Hanley. Now Mayo. See, USC does a great job keeping clubs. They held Oklahoma to 55, Southern Illinois to 45, Kansas to 59. And this game here, it's all about tempo and defense. Mayo. High arcing jumper, not there. He's got to find the open man because they're playing him tough. Little clubs playing man to man. Look at the mismatch inside. Look at the mismatch inside. Johnson trying to defend Douglas Roberts. A travel is the call on Derrick Rose. Mayo forcing the turnover. That's a foul, says John Calipari. Take a look at the defense right here. O.J. Mayo, look at the hand, doing a great job defensively. Might have had a foul. He yeah. hand checked him. There was no call. That's Rose what John Calipari said. was yelling. Yeah. 20th turnover committed by the Tigers. Nice, nice pass. pass. Yep. Good look. Lewis lost it. He was too wide open. He was shocked. I think he was that wide open. So 20 turnovers for each team tonight. Douglas Roberts. And Memphis had it and lost it. Boy, oh boy. I tell you, sloppy, sloppy play. I think he works on that sideline. You watch guys like Gary Williams and Tom Izzo, Alan Perry, and all those coaches. They earn their cash, baby. Amazing. He's kept his jacket on. Tim Floyd got rid of his a long time ago. Try to spread the court here. One-on-one -on -one maneuver. Lewis, not there in the rebound of the Tigers. No second opportunities now for USC. Club's not shooting well. Defense is up in their faces. Don't get many open looks. We gotta have some tired players out here. A lot of these guys have played heavy minutes tonight. What's really surprised me tonight is the fact that Rose has not been able to beat Mayo at all off the dribble to try and get into a lane. So he's playing a little passive offensively. No field goals yet in this overtime. Rose on the handoff. Threw it away. They beat him to the spot. Yep. Beat him to the spot defensively. Hack it. Tough and shot. Jefferson acted like he was pushed from behind, but the play goes on. You know, really sloppy play. Obviously, offensively, very ugly. But if you're a connoisseur in the game, the defensive effort has been supreme by both clubs. We still have not had a made field goal here in overtime. Just two free throws for Memphis. This might be the guy to do it. And no. Offensive foul, Douglas Roberts. Why was the offensive foul? Because the defense beat him to the spot. Yep. 
and Squall beating him to the spot. Don't allow him to make the turn. Now watch this here. Watch how he beats him to the spot. Squares his body, keeps him in front. You want to keep that offensive player in front of you. Angelo Johnson doing it defensively now, for USC. I tell you, I'll give some points in the mind of Tim Floyd. He ought to be really pleased with that defensive effort. Timeout taken by the Trojans. Their last. Each team, of course, getting an extra one as we entered overtime. A two-point lead for Memphis with a buck 36 to go in OT here at Madison Square Garden. Okay. Okay. All right, Linda Neal coming up with an action to pack Sports Center here on ESPN. But we've got some basketball still to play here in New York. Memphis up by two on USC. Derrick Rose and O.J. Mayo, two of the freshmen. Linda Neal going to talk about everybody's been talking about have not had good offensive nights. They have had to work for every shot, every point, a lot of times against one another tonight. Well, because the defense has really been outstanding. The defense has been suffocating on both guys, giving them very, very little open looks and really match it up really well on the defensive side. Let's take a look at Derrick Rose, turning it over. They're really not having a good game. There's no question he's a much better player. There's a turnover right here. Thought he got fouled. I thought he got fouled in that sequence. Bad, bad play right there, out of control. Defense beat up to the spot. Let's go quickly to Doris Burke. Doris? John Calipari brought in Bob Rotella, noted sports psychologist who observed practice and said they, they start with great focus and energy in the first hour of practice and then lose it at the end. And Calipari said to his guys, this is about finishing games. We have to finish practice, finish games. Can they? We'll see. Well, that's what Tom is on this year, trying to get his kids to understand. Last year they didn't finish their trying to get the lob on a set play. Tim Floyd not happy with the execution. So Memphis with the ball and a two-point lead with a minute and 15 seconds to go in overtime. Douglas Roberts, no. Follow, no. Follow, yes! What a great third effort. Hey, let me tell you this. The defense has been really impressive out here. Look at the speed of wow. Johnson. The foul on Dozier. Man, Johnson's got that extra gear, doesn't he? He really does. But what about Roberts, the tenacity? Watch him on the offensive boards. There he is, go up, run. Let's go a second down. Let's go a third time. And the third time he scores. Come on, Dorsey, give him a lot. Come on, give more love than that. Come on, Joey. He's trying to take it in the winner's circle. Are oh, you taking it nice and easy sitting on the sideline? Give him some love. Johnson at the line for USC. One field goal so far for Memphis in overtime. Zero field goals for seven count. Trojan's getting some good minutes out of Angelo Johnson tonight. Yeah, he really is a very quick player. Plays good on the defensive side. Again, Rose with the ball, and again, Mayo, Mayo defending him. Look at the pride Mayo's playing on the defensive side. You know, he was a bright kid. He had 29 on his uh, SAT scores. Takes on honors curriculum. Look at the clock down. Anderson. Oh, that's a big-time drive. Wow. See, that's getting the lane. Yeah. That's part of that philosophy of Vance Wilbur. Number nine coach who will do a job there. That was a great play of getting the lane and attacking. That's part of their offensive system. Mayo. And this is a 10-footer. Rebound, Tigers. And they have to foul. And Could USC may have run out of opportunities. Could be tough now. I mean... Tim Flo was telling me about Mayo's 29 of his ACTs. And See the lane? Look at the lane. No one rotated over. Watch this defensive breakdown. See, he gets the lane, and nobody. No, beat one guy is fine. But in the Tim Floyd philosophy, team defense, someone's got to rotate over and close that driving angle. That was a big, big play there. Look at Dozier. Here's tonight's Wrangler five-star player of the game. 13 points and eight rebounds. That's about as good as anybody did offensively tonight. Knocked down a lot of jumpers in the first half when Douglas Roberts and Rose were not scoring the ball at all. I think when he went to bed last night, he didn't think he'd be the star five-star player when you think about Rose and think about Mayo. Another miss, but an offensive rebound by Taggart, and now he is fouled. You gotta convert on that free throw line. You gotta make those count. That'll, that'll cost him at some point this year. Exactly. 59% as a team on the season, and way worse than that. 
right there. He got well, it up. Two shots coming now for Taggart. You talk about if they survive and win this game, earning a victory because really their offense was shut down. If you shut down the Nolan Richardson philosophy when he coached Arkansas, you take the guy that makes that offense go and cut him off, you got a chance to break them down. That's what Tim Floyd did tonight to Derrick Rose. He broke him down, didn't allow him to get them in transition, and he affected all the other people on the floor. Sports Center next year on ESPN. Mayo, three-point game. No timeouts for USC. And Memphis will use one of their two remaining timeouts with 14.8 to go. See, I don't understand a timeout right there. I really don't. They have no timeouts. Why would you allow them to be able to get some coaching strategy? I think he feels the same way. I don't think you want a timeout right there. Meanwhile, O.J. Mayo, one of his rare opportunities to get close to the rim without running into two or three defenders. Yeah, he really gets right to the basket. Good body control, gets the conversion. See, I don't think John Calipari wanted a timeout to stop the clock, let them get into their philosophy. Look, he's a little, look, he's surprised. Come on, guys. Yep. What, did I, what did I tell You're you a little right. bit earlier? I told you kids have no clue as to time, to strategy, yep. to score. They just clock. They did use a timeout, so each coach had a chance to talk it over with his players. Memphis ball, Anderson will inbound it. And into the hands of Rose. You got a foul right away, stop that clock. Make him have to make some free throws. Derrick Rose, 73% on the season. He'll get two shots. Two of three tonight. You know, Jimmy V in the NCAA tournament was all about survive and advance. Right now, it's not really about surviving because a loss here, this is not football. So a loss here is not going to be drastic. It's not going to really be disastrous. That was a big one for Rose. Memphis, even with that make, 7 of 17 from the line, but wow. they might win the game. Looks like they're going to win the game. They, they were 0 for 6 in the first half. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, it looks a lot better at 7 yeah. for 11. <laughs> I mean, even my math can tell me that's 7 for 11, Dan. One of two. But still a two-possession game with seconds ticking away. You don't want to foul. You don't want to foul. You don't want to foul here. Boy, Memphis gets this win. Another gutty effort. The Trojans come up short like they did against Kansas. But let me tell you, they're going to be a team to deal with. Memphis survives and they beat USC 62-58 to here with the Jimmy V Classic. Next on ESPN Sports Center. For more on this game, turn over to ESPN News in just a moment. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Tonight, all about fresh faces, passionate effort, and great basketball, all in honor of a man whose words resonate within all of us.